Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at problems that involve an object that's rolling, but it's going to be slipping on the surface that it's rolling on um, until at some point it will be rolling without slipping. So the classic example is a bowling ball. Uh, when you first throw that bowling ball down the lane, um, it has an initial linear velocity, v naught, um, but it doesn't have any rotation yet. And as that ball goes, then it starts to roll faster and faster and faster and faster until at some point down the lane, the ball is now rolling without slipping. Um, so what we're going to see here is that the omega is going to increase, uh, and then the linear velocity is going to decrease. And the free body diagram for the forces acting on the bowling ball is going to show us why. So obviously we've got mg acting, uh, and we've got the normal force acting. And then friction, uh, the ball is slipping along the floor, and kinetic friction is now going to be acting opposite the direction of motion here for the bowling ball. Um, so we can see that mg and the normal force don't apply any torque, but the kinetic friction does. So that kinetic friction is going to increase omega. It's going to speed it up. Um, so one thing to recognize with these types of problems here is we have the linear velocity decreasing and the angular velocity is increasing. So the sign, S-I-G-N, on our acceleration, the linear acceleration and the angular acceleration are going to be opposite. So since omega is increasing, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, our alpha is going to be positive, the sign on our alpha. And then that means the linear acceleration, since it's decreasing, we're going to go ahead and say that's negative. All right. And so um, we have a torque uh, from the friction force that's causing an alpha. And then we also have the net force acting on the bowling ball itself that's causing the linear acceleration. So like we have so many times in the past, we're going to go net torque is equal to I times alpha, and we're going to have to go net force is equal to M times A. Um, so we'll assume this bowling ball has a mass of M and a radius R. It is a solid sphere. So I for a solid sphere, looking at some sort of table, is 2 fifths MR squared. All right. So let's fill in net torque and let's fill in force. So for the torque, uh, we have the torque from friction. Uh, and if alpha is positive, that torque is going to be positive here. So that's going to equal 2 fifths mR squared times alpha. And the torque from friction is going to be the distance from the axis, r, times the magnitude of the force, which is going to be mu mg in this case. And that's going to equal 2 fifths m r squared alpha. And the masses we're going to cancel here and we're going to stop. Oh, we got one of the radiuses canceled as well. 1 r over here cancels the 1 r over here. So let's just write down what we got. Mu g is equal to 2 fifths r alpha. All right. And we're just going to stop right there uh, for the time being, and we're going to work on our F equals MA. So friction is acting to the left, uh, and our acceleration is negative to the left, so we have negative force of kinetic friction is equal to MA. And friction, again, is mu times the normal force, mg in this case, equals MA. And the masses cancel out. We get negative mu g is equal to A. Okay, so now, major concept here. While this bowling ball is not is slipping, then the wormhole equation that relates the linear velocity to omega, that relates the linear acceleration to alpha, does not apply. So it's important to note here that A is not equal to R times alpha while that bowling ball is slipping. Uh, similarly, V is not equal to R times omega. Okay? Um, so we can't use the wormhole equation to relate A and alpha just yet. Uh, but over here, once the ball rolls without slipping, then the wormhole equation does apply. So some time later, some distance later, then the wormhole equation will apply, and we can say that V final is going to be equal to R omega final. Uh, let's go capital R because that was the bowling ball. Okay. 
Um, so that's going to be kind of the key here. All right. Now we'll take a step back and say, what are they asking us to find here? They could ask us to find several different things. Uh, they could ask us to find omega final and V final. They could ask us just to find the final velocity, linear velocity of the bowling ball. Um, they could ask us to find the distance that it travels down the lane uh, until it's rolling without slipping. Um, they could ask us to find the time that it takes for the bowling ball to do this. All right, so there's a bunch of different potential options here, okay? Um, what we're gonna find here uh, in this particular problem is, let's go with the final linear velocity, okay? So we know V initial, we know omega initial is zero, uh, and we wanna find V final, okay? So the key to doing this uh, is, oh hey, the acceleration is constant, which means that I can use a kinematic equation uh, for A and relate the linear acceleration to V final and V initial and time potentially. Uh, I can use a kinematic equation for alpha to do the same thing. All right, so let's use that V final equals V initial um, plus A times T. So V final equals V naught plus AT kinematic equation um, for both rotational form and linear form and see where we're at. Okay, so let's replace alpha um, with that kinematic. So we got mu g is equal to 2 fifths times r times omega final minus omega initial, all divided by the time interval. And doing the same thing over here for the linear acceleration, negative mu g is equal to v final minus v initial all over the time interval. Okay. So the important thing to recognize here is that the time in the right-hand equation is equal to the time in the left-hand equation, all right? It's slipping, moving linearly for the same amount of time that it's slipping, moving uh, rotationally. And then the other thing to notice is that both of these equations right now are basically equal to mu g. Uh, so if we throw the negative sign over to the other side here and do negative v final minus v naught, then I have two equations both equal to the same thing. So the lovely thing here, set them equal to each other. So two-fifths r times omega final minus omega naught over t is going to equal negative v final plus v initial all over t. Oh, hey, there's a t in the denominator on both of those, and those t's are the same thing. Bink, bink, gone. Uh, and also omega initial is zero, so that simplifies that uh, left-hand side. So we've got two-fifths r omega final is equal to negative v final plus v initial. Uh, let's remember that we're solving for v final, and we need to also remember that at this point, uh, when you've got rolling without slipping now, the wormhole equations apply. So then we can replace the omega final uh, with V over R. So on this side, two-fifths R times V final over R. And then on this side, we're going to have still negative V final plus V naught. So the R's cancel on the left-hand side. Um, I'm going to add that V final over to the other side, so we end up with two-fifths V final plus V final equals V initial. Um, adding the fractions together on the right, two-fifths plus five-fifths gives us seven. That was not a seven. Let's go back and do a seven, shall we? Seven-fifths V final equals V naught. And we're solving for V final, so V final is going to be five-sevenths V initial. Let's see if that makes sense because we go back and we remember that uh, friction is going to be slowing a linear velocity down. So V final better be less than V initial uh, and V final is five-sevenths of V initial. So indeed we get a, a smaller final velocity. Um, at this point we could then solve for omega final again using the uh, equation here, and we could solve for the length of time uh, it, length of time it takes with the kinematic. You can solve for t. We could solve for the distance the ball traveled during this whole time, because we've got everything that we need. All right. So important things to remember in the setup: uh, alpha and a have opposite signs. 
uh, in this particular case, V final is less than V initial. Omega final is greater than omega initial. We start with torque equals I alpha and F equals MA. Okay? The wormhole equations don't apply until that ball is now rolling without slipping. All right? I'm going to take a look at the other problem that's classic to this. Um, say we take a bike wheel and we start spinning it so that it has an omega initial, but it has no uh, initial velocity. And then we set it on the floor. Okay, so now it's going to spin with slipping on the floor until it gets traction. Um, but we have to think about what direction that the friction would be acting here. Uh, if the ball is slipping on the floor, pushing to the left on the floor, the floor is going to push back to the right on the ball. So the free body diagram for the, sorry, the, the bike wheel, the free body diagram for the bike wheel is mg normal force, but friction now acting to the right. And at some point down the line, this bike wheel is then going to roll without slipping. Uh, it is going to have an increased linear velocity, and it's going to have a decreased omega final. But again, at this point, when the ball is now rolling without slipping, the bike wheel rolling without slipping, we can say V final is equal to R times omega final. Okay, that is not true in the interim here as the ball's going across. Once again, we need opposite signs for alpha and A. So here omega is decreasing, so I'm going to say alpha is negative, uh, and the linear velocity is increasing, so I'm going to say acceleration is positive. All right, so we're going to get a negative torque here and a positive net force. Negative net torque, positive net force to give us a negative alpha and a positive A. And we're going to set it up the same way. Net torque equals I alpha, net force is equal to MA. And solve for what they're asking you to solve for. All right, that's it for now.